What's up everyone? It's your boy Mario back again with another Game Maker Studio 2 tutorial. And today I will be talking about this stuff. As Game Maker puts it, language features. I'm gonna put if loops, while loops, and for loops. And I'll just go through the list down here. So we can start with an if the if condition. So in case, you know, this is probably the most common thing you'll see in every single programming language. If, then, statements. Or really, if, else. So, what do we mean? So, let's just break it down to simple if. So, we'll start off with the if. So we have this if that starts here as the indicator that this is going to be the start of the statement. Or the condition. The operator. Whatever people call it. And we're going to put these parentheses in here, and then it's going to be the expression, which means what do you want to check for? So let's just make a new object just to kind of type this stuff up. I'm just going to call it object2, and then we're going to make a create step. I'm just going to say like if, just make a variable called test equals false. If test equals false, and we're gonna you see down, we're gonna we have something to check for. This expression here is gonna is what we need to check. So if it is false, then we're gonna run what's in here. So just run code. Just comment. It's very simple. Now you could take it to the next level, which is by putting else, which means, so by default, there is an else. If you think about it, like if there's, you know, if it's false, then run the code. If it's true, for example, it, it'll say, well, else, do nothing. And you can still have an else here just to, to say, do nothing. I should put two, you got the two slashes, do nothing. So, yeah, and you can do some things like you know, this, this in step event, it'll just keep running until, you know, it'll always run the code that's in here until this is not false. You could still do other things like, oh, this value equals this or like anything, like any number kind of stuff. It doesn't matter. Whatever can be used. And you know, if you want to check the variables, make sure that they're you know, if it reaches something or if it's around this variable, and then run some code when it does that, do it through this. Very simple. I think everybody who watches these tutorials will understand that by now what an if statement is, but it's always good to go over them. Uh, another thing you can do with if statements, here's that little advanced technique, is in case you want to make sure you Sometimes you might want to have one variable to be checked on or like a certain like range of numbers like hey if it's If the number is greater than zero run this code if it's less than zero Which means that it's still not zero run this code, but if it's zero run do this So and I've done this like quite a bit So we're going to do an else if which you just you on you add right in between the if and the else always Never going to do that and we're going to put the else if but after the else or in before the if always going to be in between it just makes sense if equals true then it'll do this but if it's none of those then it does something else so let's actually change this from i mean it doesn't really matter let's just put zero in here instead so if it's zero if it's one, and if it's any other number, it'll change. It'll do something. So, yeah. So that's pretty much the gist of it. If else, if and else, kind of all you need. So you can check multiple times. And one thing you have to keep in keep in mind is that sometimes when you make do something like this, and you have a bunch of them. And you want to check for something. I'm sure, you, like you run it through your head first, because sometimes you might have these conditions in here, these expressions in here. That's like, oh, it's 
is it greater like for example if s is greater than zero but less than five then do this if it's make sure you do something like you know make sure you check that your next one will be like if it's greater than five but less than 10 you know you do, you run you make sure that that stuff doesn't so it doesn't run this code here for some reason or two code things kind of overlap because gotta remember it goes line by line so one thing to keep in mind so let's just delete that and let's go to the next one repeat i don't ever use repeat i'm gonna be honest but you might want to use it if you were just trying to send quick so you can see here that repeat is you got the same things like kind of an expression and a statement now i rarely use this i've only used it a few times and never in my actual code just to kind of mess around because i feel like this would be a really inefficient way of doing things in a sense so what do i mean so we can see in this example here this is honestly this overcomplicates a lot of things that you can simplify with one all in like one line and personally i would just avoid using repeat but i'll just explain it repeat but repeat you say how many times you want to repeat or an expression it seems here i may have like repeat until something is true so but it seems like numbers are typically used i don't i like i said never use this much really often and then you you do a statement like run some code and in this case you'll be creating an object so not really gonna go through that we're gonna go to the next one while while is honestly one of the most useless statements i've ever like seen if you've programmed and you use while i don't know why i mean it's literally a an if statement without the else what else can i say <laughs> yep. So, I mean, you, yeah, as I see here, be careful with your while loops. You can make them easily. Yeah, and that's the one thing they always say about while loops, but I'm like, you could do the same thing with sort of with an if statement, I guess. I mean, it just, I guess it depends. Um, like you say, while something is going on, if it's not true, or, you know, if it is true, then do this. If it's not, stop. It'll just stop. No else. Now you tell me why would you want to use this when you have the if statement and it's much more powerful with the if statement. I don't know. It's something probably just a relic of its time that they might use. I don't know. I don't know anybody who actually uses it. But then again, I don't know a lot of programmers. So let's see. Do until. This is one I don't use also because I don't know. It just seems kind of useless, but maybe you'll find use for it. So pretty much it's simple. It's just do something do a statement like run this stuff until you're like until you reach a condition like it, until something's true or false in this case it says do until the place the position has nothing in it that this what this object reaches which i mean you can do that with an if statement you see what i'm getting at there's a lot of things you just do with an if statement if you know if place is not free change x and y to a random value within this these parameters and when it is stop you don't have to do anything else you know it's just there's just a lot of things you just look at i mean, i look at him it's like this is really unnecessary i don't know why they have this honestly it's just i don't know now or the the real meat in the sandwich is the fourth statement. The fourth statement it took me to understand really this a while. And I learned this while I was learning C plus plus and C sharp. And I just kind of follow along, but I didn't quite understand. So let's actually make a fourth statement. But first, let's just talk about this here. So we have statement one. All right, so we got statement one, the expression, and statement two, and then statement three. So statement three is going to be the code that's going to actually be running. And statement one is just going to be some setup stuff. Now, I don't look at it as a statement because, I mean, it's more, but this, then you have the expression in the middle. So it's like, what's it check for? And then you do another statement. So it's like, if it's, it's pretty much about like a, a bit of an if, like check expression 
If it doesn't meet that, then do this, do statement two. And here, statement one's pretty much where we're going to start, we're going to initialize a variable. So let's get into it. So I wanna, let's change something actually. Let us make test an array. This will be super useful. Test zero equals zero. Now I, Pretty sure if I do just leave it like this, it should just generate like the rest by itself. So let us just try. So what I'm gonna do, oh, and if you don't know what an array is, um, it's a special variable that holds multiple values in a in a number index sort of thing. If that doesn't make any sense, then just follow along anyway. You might get it. So Let's type in four. And the first thing, well, I'm gonna put these here, these brackets. Now, the first thing we're gonna need for a for statement is a variable. Now this is so that we can actually have our expression check for something. So we could say, so what everybody always uses in programming is always this, we do a var i. Now, if you're on C sharp or C++, you would say like int i or something. But because we're in GameMaker and this is, and it has just var as a general, this is a variable that's not gonna be here for long. It's just only in this piece of code. And you can only use this actually. You can only use var i within the for statement, which is actually very useful, what you'll see. So we're gonna say var i equals zero. So now we have this variable. We set, we declare the variable i. And we always use i because it's just, it's a single, you know, it's a single letter. It's easy to remember. Um, it might stand for index. It's mostly used to stuff for arrays. So, <clears throat> and we're gonna say i, if it's, if i is less than 10, and then now we got our expression. So now it's gonna check, cause now we have i here. And it's gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna see if i is less than 10. Well, it is, it's zero by default. And then we're gonna say i plus plus, which means just add one to i every every time it runs this. So when a so now that we have that, a for loop is gonna work like this. Now typically your code runs like this. It goes one line, one line, one line, oh shit. This line, this line, this line, this line, this next line. Now the thing is you you can't really With a for loop, it doesn't actually, it'll stop your code from running to the next line, right? It actually keeps going in here for, I mean, it, it does it really quick. So this is one thing you have to remember. This isn't, this isn't something to do like a slow countdown, right? Or count up or whatever. It does this instantaneously. Like all the code, all the stuff that's gonna be running in here, you're saying like variables and stuff, runs instantaneously. So, so for example, so four goes here, goes here. Checks that, comes back up, checks that, runs this again, checks that, checks back, until this condition is met, until this expression is met, when i is greater than, if i is still, if, it, if i is equal 10, pretty much, that's like when it's greater than or equal to 10, it stops, and it'll just go to the next line of code after this, I'll just go do 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 do. So, now we have that. So now that I mentioned that we have this variable that's only be able to use in the for statement, that is the most powerful tool we have here. So now I can do something like, I could use that i. I could say i, you know, we can pull i at this current moment and get it. So for example, test, and we're gonna call this because it's an array, so we gotta use these square brackets. I'm gonna put i. Now, let's say the first step or the first run of this loop, it will say i equals zero. So then that means and it's like, all right, is it, if it's less than 10, plus, plus. However, it doesn't really add it just yet. It adds it when it runs again. So, like, oh, I, so that's zero by the first one. And I'm gonna say, let's just do I time, or 10 times I. So let's say, you know, we reach, we reach I equals five, right? 
So then I, you'll put five here, I put five here, and it'll be 50. So the array at the variable at test five is going to be 50. So actually, let's copy and paste this into here, into the create, because we want to run this like once. And we're going to create, we're going to run this, uh, oh, crap. I always forget this part. Hold on. Let's add the object into the room real quick and then run the code. All right. So now we can't see my screen uh, for that, but that's fine because we don't need to look at the, the build. But we're going to see test. And we open test and look we got 10 variables here for this array so we got 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 which that's 10 because of how the way computers count is start from 0 so now you see we have 0 0 1 at 1 times 10 is 10 2 times 10 is 20 and so on and so forth if that doesn't make sense still, then I don't know exactly how to help you, but that's a very simple way to put it. And and so yeah, so that's what it's checking. So that's pretty much the gist of it. You know, we check for this and you know we, we initialize, check that initial check that variable that we initialized and add that variable. Now you don't actually have to use var i, you can use var j, you can use whatever. Uh, or you could actually create a variable. At least I've done it before, I think, maybe. Here, like, you know, to, you know, gh, whatever, and I could put it here, say it's equal to zero. But that's kind of pointless. There's no need for that. Nobody's really gonna, I mean, you can probably, as an advanced, you know, as the farther you get into game maker coding, you probably be like, hey, I found some way to like, use a a variable that I can pull at any time from this object. But yeah, so another thing we could do is do something like, you know, see, let's do that. Let's, let's, do, let's add some more code to this. And let's just say if, so we have now, I mentioned before in an older video about objects, how we can pull specific objects. Now I'm not going to show you how to do that. I'll just go over exactly like, how I would go about doing it though, real quick, because we're going to do something similar, but more with a variable. So one thing I have to understand is learning the functions of objects. So we can look here, instances, we got instance count. So I mean, how many instances are in, but that's not what we want, we want to use functions and instance find and you see we have this thing called n which is the number of the instance to find and one thing you could do and so it, it, you see it returns like the instance value real value and one thing we could do is do a uh, like with instance find and we'll say like let's just say bob because we have bob in here object and we put i we'll put i so now every for loop it's going to check in bob we're going to be like hey is bob's friend if you know we're gonna have an if statement here for example this is what i would do if friend equal red we can actually do something like break you know do something maybe else and something else and then break and the idea is pretty much we need like we want to find a specific object with this friend for example this variable and or an instance of an object with this variable and this is very useful if you're trying to look like when you're trying to look for that one specific thing 
and you say break and what does break do it's actually it stops this loop it actually quits this entire loop and so like you know if it's like in halfway through the loop it'll just break this loop and be like okay just end the code and just keep going on from here you could say exit but exit is only if you want to like stop the entire event so if you have anything else here it will just end all it just wouldn't even run that and that could break some things so make sure you use your exits carefully but break is typically what we use all the time so yeah so i this is why i'm saying i is a very useful tool this is number can be used is great for arrays which is what i were using it because there's an array of of these instances and you gotta check for every single one of them and it does it instantaneously pretty much because it's code running on the processor it's not like an alarm that you can set a time to how fast you check and yeah that's kind of the gist of it and so with that you know once we find a specific thing we're looking for boom end it with break so if you still didn't quite understand that just practice and maybe watch another person's video on the for loop but that's kind of the gist of it now let us let us go to back here so the next one is switch switch is really easy you can always imagine switch as a for as a if statement anybody be one and you might be thinking I'm about to say why use a switch when you have a uh, four? Because switches are much cleaner and they work a lot nicer, I guess. So let's talk. Let's let's make a switch real quick. So let's put here. Let's just remove this as an array. Let's put test. So switch test. So what am I doing? So right now the first part of the switch is put typing switch. Setting up like a, like kind of like an if, and we have a variable here that's going to be so it's going to switch on this variable. So whatever this variable is, if it's zero, one, two, three, four, if it's a string, if it's an enumeration, you know, whatever, it's going to run some code. So we have so usually I use this a lot for states. So what state is my character in, for example? But let's let's just continue. So next thing we need for a switch is our case statements. Case, and we're gonna be like zero, break. So we got case and a break. This is where it becomes a lot more different from a if statement. So let's copy and paste this a few times. And we're just gonna put one, two, three. So we're gonna open this. This is just me formatting it properly. So in here we can just put code. So what it does is going to say switch on this. So it's like okay, if it's going to in a sense it is still an if statement, but it's a little bit different because you unlike an if like this is kind of like a really nice if and else statement. So like if test. Else, else, if. So here's one thing. So the the switch it pretty much just it checks this variable, and it will go straight to one of these. So it doesn't go like it's not like the t it's not like this where it's like oh do this check this check this check this check this it says. If it's two, go straight to two, run whatever is into and break. It's not gonna, you know, this goes through every, for every, like, if you have in here, it's just gonna keep running, it's checking all the ifs. And sometimes you don't want that because sometimes your previous if might change a value and you don't want that value to be like, you know, doing anything to the if statement. So that's something you wanna. Make sure so it breaks that. So that's why I got the breaks and it goes there. Now another thing you do too is kind of like that final else and you say like default. Sorry. Default 
break, which is just saying if there no condition is met, do this. And that's kind of nice to have as a backup. That case expression statement, easy. So yeah, as it says here, just what I said, expression is executed, you know, checks that, then it compares all the results, then it executes it and then continues, then breaks and it skips the entire thing. So as we yeah, see, yeah, this will default. And yeah, you know, you, you just know when to use a switch. I, I think I've come to realize is, <clears throat> you know, like you wouldn't use a switch when you're doing something like, like with keyboard controls or something. You always want to use an if, because you could check. I don't know, it's a little nicer, but you know when you use a switch. It'll just come to you. So the rest of these are just uh, nothing really important. So <clears throat> let's see. Continue. I don't use continue a lot, or ever actually. It's just yeah. It's just this here. It, goes back to the loop so you know this is like saying if the array is like nothing and has no like string value here it's just continue it goes back to the top and starts it again never used it but maybe I'll look into using it at some point exit as I said just exits like the entire script or event just, it's you know just stops the code where it's at and goes to the next process. With I explained that the object video is just pretty much calling the you know object and you can set things within that object without having to do this object dot y for example. And a return in my scripts video I explained this as well. It just returns a value. But this is only used in like scripts, so keep that in mind. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it with everything. I really made this video really for the if and or statements, but for the, those loops. And yeah, so I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's always a 30 minutes long and nobody's probably gonna watch this, but check our social media links down below and leave a like, subscribe, comment below, and have a wonderful day.